the last one I'm going to touch on is reports. Now, I'm actually just going to change plans slightly because I've been making all sorts of a mess here so that I can actually show you something I created, just what I prepared earlier. Um, a slightly different uh, plan with a uh, sort of Kanban style project so that I can actually take you through the reports tab with some meaningful things in it. So when you go to the reports tab, um, we have six reports um, out of the box. Um, I'll run through quickly what they show. Themes, we haven't touched on themes yet. Themes are really great. They're a way that you can tag things. So if I look at my scope, um, my scope uh, screen, um, and I just make sure that I have themes on here. And I can't see it. Yep, I have got it there. Let me just shrink some of the stuff down because I've got far too much going on. Ah, themes. And themes, I can basically, under reports tab, I can create a theme, just literally type it in, whatever it is going to be. And I can tag either my epics or my stories or my initiatives easier uh, and say these relate to a theme. Now, themes, think of themes like your kind of strategic objectives, if you like, because the whole reason that we're all doing this work and these projects is because someone at a board level has said, this is what we're doing as a company moving forward. Uh, in this example, I've got 5% of our time should be spent reducing technical debt, 30% on new features, 30% on hot fix releases, and 35% on R&D. So that is my target, and that's what this first pie chart here is showing. When I've labeled my initiatives or my epics, based on my plan, this is what actually is really gonna happen when I estimate. Not really matching up towards the two. When people start logging time and actually doing it, this is actually what's happening. So you get this great view, really simple setup, of how you're actually tracking against what you said you were going to do at the beginning of the year. And it's a lot of stuff that doesn't really happen at the moment because we all get so bogged down with the day-to-day -day sort of keeping things, keeping the wheels turning. So it's great to have that kind of top-down view. Um, really simple, really easy to get, and yeah, it's really useful, really powerful. The releases view, this is great. This just gives you a nice card for each release and tells you the epics that are going to be on it. That's kind of a nice, nice high level view. We can change this to stories as well. And say, great, here's our next release. Here are the stories that we are going to fix in this. So you can communicate that to the people that need to know. Um, and it's nice and easy. They don't need to be experts in anything else. And knowing how you got to there, they just know that that is what is coming up so they can plan and forecast themselves. The schedule, which is what we've been looking at, is on every page anyway. But again, you can come in here and you can have it as a report. Capacity, this is great. This is really interesting because it knows all the people you've got working and how much time they've got free. I can actually have a look and see what the capacity view is. And I can see how many, what the free capacity is and what the planned capacity is and what the utilization is. What's really interesting when I use the skills is where are my bottlenecks? That's the top three bottlenecks. And I've got free capacity as well. And the, so the reason that there's architecture on there, it gives you the top three for each, and this is not real data, so normally it wouldn't, wouldn't show uh, in both places. Um, so the top three bottlenecks, I know that if I throw things at this, I can actually get more done. So it's actually pointing out to you what skills are required, what you're missing, um, and why you could get more stuff done in terms of hours of the day or in terms of bodies available to do work if you just had that extra skill. So this is a fantastic thing to do. And the great thing as well is with all the reports is you can view these either by a total group level or down a team or a personal level. So I can go and see what each the capacity of each person is on the upcoming sprints coming forward. This is a Kanban board, so these are the, the, the continuous weeks that we're moving forward through in. So really great way of seeing for each week and each sprint, have we got as much stuff in there? Why not? Is it because of the people I've got on my team? Is it because we need to change something else? And it's just getting the information that all exists. It's all taking this great wealth of data from JIRA, but just giving it to you in a way that's meaningful, that you can actually do something with. The sprint report, I can't show you here, um, because I'm on a Kanban board, uh, but it shows you what you basically get completed in each sprint, and they straightforward. Um, and also the scope report, um, which is basically our, our backlog that we're working on, but you know, if you like a work breakdown structure uh, type report, and you want to say to people, this is what we're working on, this is the priority, are you happy with it? Then you can look at this here.